Okay, good morning, everybody. I want to learn some Torah with you, but before that, I just I want to get a little perspective again. Um, you know, why are we here? Why are we having chizuk sessions and not having regular shiurim? For not only chizuk, of course, and to, to, to our amun and be talking with a kodesh baruch but also I think so we don't go crazy. So uh, we don't we don't not only not lose our perspective, we we don't lose our minds because of what's going on. So I'm just you know the Lutzato in his introduction to Mesil Shasharim. He says that the classic Mesil Shasharim Sefer. He says that uh, I'm not I'm not coming to teach you anything you don't know already. I'm coming to review those things that everybody knows. So I'm just going to spend a few moments of perspective before we get into the Torah, reviewing things that we already know. Maybe you even know it better than I do. We know that the Secretary General of the United Nations said we have to have context. We have to have context about what's happening here. Israel has to understand there's context. Yes, there is context. The context is very simple. The context is that Hamas, since the day it was created, was created with one purpose in mind, and that was to kill every Jew and to destroy the state of Israel. That's the context. The context is that when a child, a Palestinian child, learns math in school, he learns math like this. If you have seven Jews and you kill five of them, how many are left? This is a math lesson in the Palestinian area. Without this is not this is this is the emis right? Our, our hearts are broken. Our hearts are broken. The numbers that we've woke up to this morning, chayalim kedoshim, holy soldiers, who are no longer in this world, we're we're in anguish. We can ma- cannot imagine the anguish and the pain, and the suffering of those families, whose children, whose parents, whose spouses are being held as hostages, right? We, we, we have perfect faith in the Rabboni Shalom. With the Rabboni Shalom's help, we brought back Soviet Jews. We brought back Syrian Jews. We brought back Ethiopian Jews. We brought back the hostages in Antebi. And with the Rabboni Shalom's help, we will bring back these hostages. The question, why... After October 7th, after the worst day of barbarism, the first the worst day of tragedy since Horban Europe, the loss of more Jews at one day than since Horban Europe. Terrible, ugly, disgusting. We know we know what happened. Why is it that that triggered, that day triggered an outburst of anti-Semitism throughout the world? In the Western world, America. Why universities, academia? What? What? Why is that? The answer is there's a simple. The simple answer is halachahi, she'es of sona es Yaakov. It is just built in to the world that there's a hatred towards Klal Yisrael, a hatred, a jealousy. We are we're a minority. We are still a minority, and yet we have overcome minorityism and have become successful. They can't handle that. They want to remind us that we are a victim. We were a vic- once a victim. You're always a victim. And no people has been victimized more than the Jewish people throughout world history. But we are not victims. We are not victims. Our history has exploded their narrative, has destroyed their theology. Look at what we, with the help of God, created. Look at the state of Israel and Eretz Yisrael, what we have created here, right? Another thing I want to mention, the hospital. The hospital, right? You have to be a brilliant United States congresswoman or a brilliant queen of Jordan or a brilliant journalist to to this day insist that the Israeli army, that Sahal blew up a hospital, the main hospital, when that hospital is still standing you have to be you have to be someone very special to what a what a shame what a shame what a sham of of fact but that's don't confuse me 
with the facts. The Hamas health ministry, right, is coming out with facts and figures which we cannot believe because the, the Hamas health ministry is housed underneath the major hospitals in, in the Palestinian territory, right, and putting the Palestinians and it at complete complete risk right but it's it's all a lie it's always been a lie the main purpose is to kill the jews the jews are the the jews are killers the jews killed the the founder of christianity the blood libels through history right they care about the palestinians they don't care about the palestinians they don't care about uh, look what's been going on in ukraine and russia for two years now is it two years did you see people marching? Do you see 100,000 people marching in London? Do you see 10,000 people gathering in, in New York or Boston or Chicago because of what's happening to Ukraine? Do you Did you see it when there was a civil war in Syria? Did you see it with the protests in Iraq? What went on in Iraq after they killed the protesters? Listen, we have to remember that we are the children. We are the sons and daughters of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Saw, Rivka, Rachel, We are the sons and daughters of Yoshua ben Nun, of Joshua. We're the sons and daughters of King David. We're the sons and daughters of Mordechai and Esther. We're the sons and daughters of Rashi, the Rambam, Rabbi Kivager. We're the sons and daughters of all the Gedole Torah in every generation. We're the sons and daughters of Theodore Herzl, were the sons and daughters of Menachem Begin, were the sons and daughters of Yoni Netanyahu, we are the sons and daughters of Sharansky. We were here before them, and we will be here after them. Am Yisrael Chai, Netzach Yisrael Lo Yishakir. All right, let's learn a little bit of Torah. I want to talk about I want to talk about the end of the Parsha, which really the major theme of the Parsha is the Akedah. The Akedah Yitzchak, the binding of Isaac, where Avram takes his son, his only son, and puts him up and is prepared to sacrifice him, right? You have the sheet there. Okay, we'll get to it at some point. Um, I, I can't control the sheet. Okay, good. All right. Um, this is an inexplicable moment in Jewish history, right? Uh, a totally inexplicable moment right? Um, how do we understand it? So here's what I want to do. I want to ask you to forget everything you were taught in grade one and grade two, anything you were taught about the Akedah in grade one in primary school, anything you were taught by any rabbi, including me, <clears throat> I want you to forget about what you were taught about the Akedah. And let's look at the Akedah with fresh eyes as if we're reading the story for the very first time. Let's try to understand this story, right? Forget what you learned about. Here you have Avram, who at three years old, we know, discovered God, the child genius, understood that the world had to have a creator. Avram fought his own father and mother, rebelled against his father and mother. Avram Ha'ivri, he stood alone in the entire world, a world of idolatry and idol worship and taught belief in Amunas Hashem and monotheism. Lech Lecha, the ten tests. Avram was courageous. He was fearless. Right? He stood alone. He defended. He argued with, with the Rabboni Shalom. Right? He argued with Sarah. He lost the argument. Yishmael versus Yitzchak. Right? But he argued. Rabboni Shalom tell, promises him something. That you're going to be a great nation. And he says, How do I know? He argues with the Rabboni Shalom. He wants proof. Right? Avram Avinu argues with God. With Stom in our Parsha, if there are 50 righteous people, if there are 45, if there are 40, if there are 10, right? He's unrelenting of Ramavinu. His entire persona is fearlessness. And then one day, look at the beginning of number one in your sheet. Then one day, out of nowhere, after these things, well, Okim Nisad, Avram, God tested Avram. Vayomri love Avram. And he says to Avram, come, I want you. I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son. Vayomer Hineni. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. Now, we have to understand, until this moment, 
until this moment, what did we learn about Avram Avinu, right? What did we learn about Avram Avinu? All the things I just mentioned, his, his fearlessness, his relentlessness, his courage, right? What else did we learn? We learned in our Parsha, the Kodesh Baruch who promises him, you will be your, you're going to have a people. This people, this great nation will be more numerous than the sands, the sand in, uh, by the sea. They'll be more numerous than the stars in the sky. This future people will be my people. And then, out of nowhere, he tells him, I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son. This was the hope, right? One son. He was going to build this nation. And Avram Avinu, Layomer, Kachnas, Pincha, and the sheep. Take your son, your only son, as Yitzchak, Asher Ahavta, who you loved, as Yitzchak, Velechokha, Eretz Maria, go there, Sham Ola Achad Aharim, I want you to put him up as a sacrifice. He got up early in the morning. Rashi tells us, you know, he did it all himself. He didn't have any of his servants do this. He did it himself. Zrizim Makdim and Lemitzvahs. He took his sons with him. He went, he went, didn't waste any time to take, put his son, and he put him up, and he put him up on the, this is inexplicable, right? Avram Avinu, the great courageous Avram Avinu, argues with the Rebbeinu every step, who fought kings, right? He becomes passive, obedient, wimpish, a nebuch, right? What 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 what's going on here? How do we how do we understand this? I want to tell you how we're going to understand this. Rashi, if you read Rashi carefully, you will discover in in two places in the parsha that Rashi is really saying, if you read it properly, that Hakadosh Baruch Hu, I never told you to say I'm going to sacrifice. I told you to take him up by the mountain. Of Rama Vinu, of Rama Vinu, said to the Rebbeinu Shem. Okay, you want me to do this? I give up, right? I'm going to call your bluff. After everything I've done, the whole promise is out the window. A great nation, more numerous than the stars, more numerous than the sand and the sea. Everything you promised me, the whole, the whole dream of Am Yisrael, out the window, I'm going to go and do it. This is what you want me to do? I'm going to do it, right? You want to blow up everything? You want to erase the dream, the promise? Yes, sir. You want me to jump? How high should I jump? That's what Avram said, because Avram Avinu knew. He knew that the real test was knowing that the Rabbanu Shalom will never destroy the Jewish people, right? And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Look at the sheet. Look at Pasuk 12. You have the whole from the Akedah, the, the whole story of the Akedah starts in Pasuk Aleph. We read it, right? He takes him, and then where's the you know the, the moment, the dramatic moment? Yitzhak says, You got the wood, you've got the fire. Where's the where's the animal? Where's the Korban? And he tells him, Don't worry, God, God will provide it, right? And then he he ties him up, right? Number 10, Pasuk 10, Yud, where he shlach Avram at Yado, he took his hand, where he cocked at a machel, he took the knife, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to kill him. Where he created love, Malach Hashem, and God calls out, and an angel calls out from heaven. By Yomer Avram, Avram, by Yomer Hineni, yes, sir, here I am. I'll teach Lach Yad Kalan. Don't touch him. Don't touch your only son. Don't touch your only son. Right? And they're, right, that's it. That's the end of the Akedah, right? He takes the Vayisa Avram at the oh, before that. That's just Pasuk 12, right? Pasuk 12, Yud Beit. Vayomer, al tishlach yad kal anar, al tasla mob, don't do anything to him. Ki ata yadati, now I know ki yurei elokim ata, now I know you really fear me. Now I know you really fear me. Veloch hashak des bincha es yichid chemeni, we were not going to hold him back to me, right? That's the end of the story. Look in the next Pasuk. All of a sudden, Vayisa Avram at Enav. Now remember, we, we're reading this for the first time. We know what's coming, right? He saw the horns of a dilemma. He saw a ram in the, in the in, in, in this thicket, and he took the ram, and he sacrificed the ram, and the ram replaced Yaakov, Yitzchak, and of course the, the ram's horn, the shofar, the great shofar, that's where it came up. But we don't know that yet, right? We don't know that yet. What do you mean? Vayisa Avram is it? What, what what happened? Why did he turn around 
and find the ram and take the ram and what was it? What's, something's missing here. Something is missing here. There was a conversation between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Avram Avinu at this time, which led him to turn around to get that ram. And if you look at number two, the bottom of the page, this is the Medrash Tanchuma, the Chachmeh Medrash, the rabbis in the Medrash, they fill in the blanks of what was happening here. And let's read a little bit. Ki ata yadati ki ki mata, right? I now know you will fear me. Miyad, immediately. Patach HaKadosh Baruch Hu et HaRakia et HaRafel. HaKadosh Baruch Hu opened up the skies. Vayomer, binishbati nu Mashem. I promised. Avram says to him, Amrle, atanishbata, vaninishbati. Shalom, right? You said yours, Rabban Hashem. You did yours. Now, I want to do mine. You said yours. I did everything I was supposed to do. Now, you have to listen to me now, right? I'm not going to come down from this altar until I say to you whatever I want to say to you. I want. I have. Some, I have a speech to make, and I want to make it to you. I went through this whole thing, right? I want. To, I have something to say. Right? Speak. So Abraham says, "Lo Didn't you tell me? Count the stars, right? How how great they are. Take your only son, right? This is not a complaint, by the way. I could have." Argued that this is really my my complaint to you. Over the page, right? Amartali, let me tell you what I really want to say. I don't want to. I have no complaints that you told me I'm going to have one son, that he's going to be my only son. I'm going to have a nation that's like the stars of the sky. But all of a sudden, it's going to be. This, I'm not. Going, I'm not going there because I know that's not what you wanted to do. I know that's not what you want to do. I called your bluff. I went through and I did it and you stopped me because you didn't want me to do it, right? That's not what I wanted to say, right? I played, I was a good soldier. But now this is what I am asking you, right? Achshav ata omerli heleu sham olova kivashti es yitri Now here's what I want. Kach, this is what. Veloish biticha kach. I want you to promise me. Kishiyu banav shel yitzchak chotim when the children, I know my children are going to sin. I know the Jewish people are not perfect. I know they're human. And they're not going to, they're, they're going to falter, right? And that when they're in a tzara, when they're in a moment of tragedy and distress and threatened survival, I want you to remember, Rabbi Hashem, now I want you to remember this, this scene, this act, this akeda. Remember what I was there to do. As if it's really the ashes of Yitzchak we were ready to sacrifice. Forgive the Jewish people, and free them. Take them out of this tragedy. Amalek Kodesh Bor, who answers him, Ata Marta et Shlacha, Avram, you said yours, and I, and I appreciate the fact, you didn't say to me, why did you do that? How could you chutzpah? How could you do this to me? That you really understood what was going on, that I would never do it. You said yours, right? You want protection now. From this moment, it should protect the Jewish people forever. You said yours. Ata Marta et Shlacha, now I'm going to say mine. Okay, here's my response to you. The children of Yitzchak, the Jewish people, are going to be imperfect to me, right? And I'm going to judge them on the holy day of Rosh Hashanah. How many weeks ago was it? But they want merit. They want forgiveness. I will remember the Akeda Yitzchak. I want, you, I want you to take this ram. I'm not going to read it, but that's the rest of the psukim. Sacrifice this ram. Turn around, right? And make take this ram and sacrifice him and take the horn of the ram. If the Jewish people, you took token, lefanai b'shofar b'rosh Hashanah. If the Jewish people, at the very least, Keep Rosh Hashanah and blow the shofar. 
אלא אם מבקשים שיחפש להם זכות רעית, אזכור להם, אזכור להם רעית, שזה אמר לי, מהו השופר? He says, so Avram said, what's the shofar? What are you talking about? Right? Amar lei. So here, now we continue with the psuk of Pesach Yud Beis, Pesach 12. What's the shofar? Amar lei, sechazor lacharecha. Turn around. Miyad. V'yisa Avraham et einav. He lifted his eyes. V'yar v'yine ayel achar. Nachaz besvach b'karnav. There was a, a ram stuck with its horns. The drama was the horn stuck in the thicket. And this, by the way, the Medrash says a powerful thing. This is one of the 10 things, this ram with its chauffeur was the one of the 10 things created at twilight before creation, before Shabbos. This is this story of the Akeda that to take your son and put him up there and I'm going to, but it, that it's really not going to happen that the test was to understand that God would never do this. This was already at the creation of the world. He took it. Amr le HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to him, Yehu tokin lefanai bekeren shel, take, take, take this, take this, blow shofar, do Rosh Hashanah, do Rosh Hashanah. Bo shiem, and I'll save them. Vefdeim, and I'll, I'll release them, me'avon oseim, from their sins, I'll forgive them for everything. Vuhu she David, mishabech, and this is what King David said, vekeren yishai, Miskavi, Umenusas, Umenusi, the Gun Tehillim, Veshbor, all Goliaths, and I will break, I will break the chains of the diaspora, of our dispersion and our suffering, may I land from the Jewish people, Venachem Otam, Betok Tzion, I'll bring them all back to Eretz Yisrael, Shenemar Ki Nichem Hashem, Amen. Bonish Lolam, Rabbonish Lolam, I want to ask, I want us all to ask the Rabbonish Lolam, Akkadish Borchu, Bechol Loshen Shel Bekosha. We have to ask you, Rabbi Nishnam, please, we have to ask you, Bechol Loshan Shel Bakosha, we blew the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, we fasted on Yom Kippur, you forgave us on on, on, on Hoshana Rabba, right? We, we Look what we have accomplished. Look what the Jewish people has accomplished in the last 80 years. Look what we built here. This Medinat Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael, we've come back after so much suffering with your help. Right? There's more Torah being learned here in Eretz Yisrael than in the time of the Amorim, Amorim and the Tanoim and Amorim, the time of the Talmud, the time of the Gemara. More Torah. The startup nation, laboratories, inventions in high tech. I always say the Jewish people gives the world two great things, the Torah and ways. And that's not, that's not a silly analogy. Because on Rosh Hashanah, the, 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 the Gemara says that every Jew marches I don't know if I said this in the last few weeks, but it's worth repeating. Every Jew marched one by one. Kivnei Maron. Gemara Rosh Hashanah, we say it in davening. Single file. Every single Jew is judged by the Rabban Shalom independently. The Gemara has three pshat and what it means, but I just want to say, this is a hard thing to believe, that God really judges every single person. And by the way, by the way, on Rosh Hashanah, God judges not only us, he judges those, those lower than animals, the Hamas also. The whole not, the whole world is judged on, on Rosh Hashanah. The Chavetz Chaim once said that if the non-Jews would realize they're being judged on Rosh Hashanah, they'd all go out and buy a machzer, right? So it's a hard thing to believe that at one time Rabbi Hashem is judging every person. But listen, it's not a hard thing to believe. Look at this ingenious thing called ways that this holy Jewish fellow in Tel Aviv, this genius scientist invented in Tel Aviv, right? What happens? Here I am in Yerushalayim, and I'm driving my car, and I put on Waze because I want to go to Netanya, and Waze talks to me, and I talk to Waze. And at the same time in New York, somebody is driving from New York to Connecticut, and he's talking to Waze, and Waze is talking to him. And somebody in Paris, somebody in London, Somebody in Chicago, somebody in Manchester, in London, all over the world. A billion people at the same time are speaking to this machine, to this technology, and the technology is speaking back to him. Is that not the biggest proof for us to understand Allah has come of a comma, how the Rabban Shalom is judging and is with us and loves us each and every one of us? So simple. 
Right. So Rabbi Shalom, we asked the whole Lashon Shabbat We did everything you asked us to do. We're trying. We're not perfect. We're doing everything. Everything. Rabbi Shalom, please. Oshia Samecha. Save your people. Uvareches Nachlosecha. Bless your inherited people. Ure Vonim Levana. Bring, bring, bring everybody home. Bring an end to this. Destroy those destroyers and save Am Kadosh Am Yisrael. Amen. Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Amen. Shakach Rabbeinu. Thank you for the words of Chizuk. Rabbi Sam, it means a lot to me that you were here. It means a lot to me that everybody is here and we should all be dancing in the street very soon. And Amen. governing with all our hearts Thank you. Modi Manach Nulak to the Rabboni Shalom. And strengthening Amen. our Limura Torah and our Shmira Samitzvah, the quality of our Torah study, the quality of our mitzvahs. Nothing, I can't emphasize it more. Fila, Fila is so important. Davening is so important. We've talked about it. I'm sure everybody is talking about it in this venue. Learning Torah, Davening, quality of our mitzvahs, upgrading everything we do. Everyone, Aleva Atzlach.